And our new national MP, Greg, tēnā koe. Through my eternal lineage, I am affiliated with Ngāpuhi, traces, tracing my ancestry to Canon Wiremu Keretene, my great great grandfather. He achieved the historic milestone of being the first in his tribe of Ngāti Hine, just, just down the road, to be ordained as deacon in the Anglican Church in 1901. On my father's side, I am connected to Ngāti Poro and Ngāti Kahungunu. My paternal grandfather, after whom I am named, played a pivotal role in the Anglican Church. In the 1950s, he represented the Whangara Parish of the Waiapu Diocese. My full name is Tehira Keretene Te Whakaiti Painga, bestowed upon me by my grandfather, Archdeacon Te Kepa Painga, in 1982. <coughs> <laughs> this name intricately weaves together my Anglican heritage, my iwi, and my cultural background. Growing up, I was immersed in the traditions of the Mihinare faith with my staunchly Anglican grandparents, not so much my parents. My childhood was infused with the rhythms of kapahaka and discussions on politics were a daily occurrence, making them an integral part of my upbringing. E hikama, e karama, e huama, e taima. Ladies and gentlemen, tēnā tātau katoa. I am delighted to present a comprehensive overview of my paper, which delves into the profound significance of Te Tiriti o Waitangi within the context of kapahaka compositions and its compelling relevance to atuatanga, or Māori theology. I commence my address today with an impassioned haka, a, spirit ex a spirited expression of joy and jubilation, deeply rooted in Ngāpuhi culture. This is known as Te Hari a Ngāpuhi, the dance of joy for the Ngāpuhi people. I regard this Hari as the first Māori theological response in Aotearoa, New Zealand. The sentiments encapsulated in Te Hari Ngāpuhi reflect the steadfast faith and belief of my people of Te Taitokerau in the gospel, coupled with profound respect for Reverend Marsden. It was under his guidance that the first ever church service and sermon took place just over there on the shores of Aotearoa at Oihi, Christmas Day, 1814. Ladies and gentlemen, this underscores the undeniable presence of faith in Aotearoa, New Zealand, not only as a legitimate force, but also as a significant contributor to public discourse over the past two centuries. As historical testimonies affirm, Māori communities responded to Te Tiriti o Waitangi by turning to traditional forms of expression, thus including chants, haka, waiata aringa, and the like. These artistic endeavours served as powerful mediums through which the Māori people voiced their opposition to injustices and conveyed their political viewpoints. Drawing inspiration from influential figures such as 
prophet o poropiti te koti arikirangi te turuki, Dr. Ngāpō Wehi and the Honourable Sir Peter, Dr. Sharpul, Dr. Peter Sharples. This paper underscores the inherent political dimension deeply woven into their compositions. I will analyse three compositions, each belonging to a unique genre. Mō teatea, waiataringa and haka. In light of time constraints, my focus will be exclusively on a single verse from each composition. You have to buy the book one day. Ana nga nga waiata nga titonga ka tirohia e te neiata. First and foremost, Māori performing arts is defined in this paper as a traditional art form also referred to as kapahaka, which has no affiliation to modern dance, theatre production, drama performance, or the All Blacks. <laughs> According to Sir Timo Tikaretu of Ngai Tuhoe Ngāti Kahungunu, kapahaka Māori performing arts encompasses the performance of poetry of different genres embellished and reinforced with hands, with feet, with legs, with body, with voice, with tongue, <coughs> with eyes, all amalgamating to convey the fullness of the words and the accompanying song or chant of welcome, exaltation, defiance or contempt. According to a uh, venerable archdeacon, Dr. Honeka, uh, the renowned Tanifa of Ngati Pro and Ngati Kahungunu, the haka becomes a tool to embody the sense of self determination and a platform for the proclamation of a new and radical ideology. Haka should be understood as a form of sheltered poetry or, drama, or a dramatized form of karakia. It involves vigorous body movement and the stamping of either, of either or both feet. The actions of the haka complement the words and the meaning, though actions are often the choice of the individual involved in the haka. The ferocity of the haka cannot be ignored. It is a gripping performance its message really confronts the listeners and the audience. The haka can be used to echo the social, political and religious feelings of the composer and the iwi express their assent by providing the embellishments which are expressed in repetition of some of the words or the addition of their own words or the recurring, or the reoccurring hey and ha and ks and ah ha ha as a form of amen. Added embellishment is done through the rolling of the eyes or the protruding of the tongue. Kapahaka is a means by which Māori can express and reaffirm its cultural identity, heritage, its values and language, etc. through its lyrics and modern mode of transmission. Matehi. Mate wehi, mate wana o te haka, te taha wairua o te haka e whakarākei e whakawhanake. Ko te haka, te tahi kauaka a te Māori, hei whakau i ngā uara me ngā manako ngā hiahia o te iwi. He mea kite a karu, he mea rongo a taringa a ngā kau, he mea tā ki te ngā kau o te tangata, Aharea kenei. Kapahaka serves as more than just a traditional art form. It becomes a powerful avenue for expressing and reaffirming cultural identity, encompassing heritage values through the medium of te reo Māori. In parallel, atuatanga and Māori spirituality and theology extends beyond artistic expression, seeking to bl blend traditional beliefs with biblical teachings. Within the Māori language, four foundational terms exist that I've seen 
and I've invented by adding a fifth. Atuatanga, Matai Fakapono, Rangahau Fakapono, Fakakoranga Atua, and Iho Atua. The word of the term Atuatanga was first used by Tohu Kakahi and Te Fiti Mai in reference to the skills and attributes of Tahu Potiki, Wiri Muratana in 1880. According to the Venerable Archdeacon Dr. Tiri Hollis, Bishop Muru Walters, Dr. Byron Dangiwai, and the Venerable Archdeacon Dr. Tewaka Melbourne, Atuatanga is summarised as a concept in Māori spirituality and theology that encompasses all things related to Atua, which can refer to Māori ancestors, deities, or the Christian God. Ponder on that for a minute or two. It involves an attempt to blend Māori traditional beliefs with biblical teachings, reflecting pre-European Māori theology and spirituality. Atuatanga aims to liberate and empower Māori by encouraging critical analysis of their social, cultural and economic situations from their Christian faith perspective. It promotes the indigenous theological approaches and emphasises the importance of embracing Māori identity in all aspects of Christian living. E haraite mea ka whaiti noa te atuatanga ki te hunga whakapono ki a tātau e te iwi karaitiana e kao. Engari ku tōna pūtake, he ngā toro atu ki te whakaokawa i ngā kaupapa totohe. Hei whakatū, hei whakamana i ngā reo o te hunga rawakore, i ngā reo o te pani, i ngā reo o ngā reo tūroro, mā rātau te hunga karekaureo. Theology has to speak to economical, political, social and religious issues. It must represent those deeply affected by poverty, suppression and push for social transformation and justice in all areas of life that are instrumental in promoting well-being. Max Stackhouse states, public theology points towards the social order that is close to how God wants us to live together as humanity has yet discerned. It often appeared first in ecclesiology, then in civil society, and through the influence of these as carried by ordinary, by ordinary believers into the pub, political realm. Greg, I believe that faith, our whakapono, has a legitimate place in the public square and a contribution to make to public discourse. Kia kaha, Greg Fleming. I believe our country, Aotearoa New Zealand, can lead the world politically, socially, ecumenically, and culturally. Let's dive into some Māori politics. <laughs> te koti ariki rangi te tūruki. Ka re te ponei mō rikarika noa. The following mō te tea is a traditional chant, a waiata tangi, a song of lament by Te Matua Tangata, composed in 1883 for the opening of their carved meeting house, Ere Pitana in Te Whaiti, Te Ruera, in the heart of Ngai Tūhoi. The largest number of Māori chants falls into the categories of laments, waiata tangi, and love songs, waiata aroha. Tangi, as we know, means to weep or utter a sorrowful cry, while aroha means love, yearning, and pity. In the mournful wailing of these songs, the Māori people express their deepest feelings. <clears throat> I'm going to give it a crack. You can read the English. Kotemana 
けかけやいれらこてろへっぽったえよつほえへろごかほうへやきゃんがつやわはい。As stated by Professor Tayarahia Black, this waiata is far reaching in that respect, as the Koti is saying that the treaty should be regarded as a foundation for meaningful discussions between Māori and the government. Te Koti therefore draws upon the treaty as a constitutional document, citing the legal recognition of the treaty's constitutional status would appear a necessary step in progressing towards a just society. Te koti arikirangi te turuki expresses a sense of searching in vain upon waking to the world. The mention of mana, as referred to by, um, discussed last night by Pihupa Tikitohi, refers to a concept in Māori culture that encompasses authority, power, and prestige. The composer, Te koti, emphasizes the significance of various aspects, including the Treaty of Waitangi, the land court, and the separate mana, better translated as te mana motuhake. The rohepotai of Tuhoi and the peace made with Ngāti Awa are specific references to the territorial boundaries and diplomatic relations. The composer asserts the importance of maintaining Māori mana and expresses concerns about abandoning it. Here, we see a plea for the preservation of Māori authority, especially in the face of potential legal challenges or changes. Our second composition. A wayataringa. If I had a guitar, I'd sing it, but I don't. A wayataringa, an action song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Traditionally, lyrics were chanted, but the arrival of European migrants introduced a sung style. Yay, praise the Lord. <laughs> the Māori adopted this style, and some waiataringa have a distinctly European sound. Six-string guitar or 12-string guitar if you're flash. Um, while remaining Māori in essence and spirit. Māori embraced this approach, resulting in waiata modern contemporary song and dance. This composition is a waiata um, performed by uh, Te Ropa Manutaki at the Aotearoa Māori Performing Arts Festival held here in 1990, now known as uh, Te Matatini. It was held across the road at the big park over there. I was eight. Or nine. Yeah, yeah. Manutaki won that year. They haven't won since. <laughs> this Waiataringa was composed by Dr. Peter Sharples to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi. Funny story, um, they just performed, this is my whanau team, they just finished the um, closing ceremony of the Commonwealth Games in Auckland and they all jumped on a bus and come straight up to Waitangi uh, for the Pohiri um, that same week. The opening stanza of the song introduces the idea of likening the Treaty of Waitangi to a sacred covenant. This is 1990. The composer asserts that the treaty is, in fact, a valid and sacred covenant. Consequently, when the term covenant is employed, it evokes both a spiritual and legal obligation. Hamish McLean, ex-student of St. John's Theological College. Haitana, the term covenant is commonly understood in modern legal contexts, such as a land covenant governing rules on land title. However, this modern use, usage deviates from the original meaning of the term. When the treaty is referred to as a covenant, it doesn't align with its legal connotation, but rather draws on a biblical interpretation. The concept of a covenant known as Berit, Hebrew, my Hebrew is not flash, and Hebrew originated over 2,000 year, years ago with the ancient Israelites. Torrance asserts that in the Old Testament, Hesed is primarily concerned with the unparalleled, abundant, and unwavering nature of God's love. 
He aroha maurua. He aroha mutunga kore. He aroha na te atua. There is a precise difference between a covenant and a contract. In a contract, we have legal relationships in which two people or two parties bind themselves together on mutual conditions to affect some future result. But a covenant like that in marriage is a promise binding two people or two parties to love one another unconditionally. Ko te ahua tanga whakahirahira o e nei kupu i te reo Māori me te reo hiperu ko tōna hononga a oati nei. Ko tōna hononga a whanaunga tanga i wainga nui e te atua me tātau teira tangata. The term kawenata, gov- covenant, carries deliberate weight in the composer's intent, symbolising not merely an agreement, but an enduring commitment etched in the hearts of the Māori people. The Tiriti o Waitangi stands as a testament to the sacred bond that transcends time, a covenant of utmost importance. Last but not least, my favourite, Hagataparahi. This Hagataparahi, a renowned composition by Dr Ngāpō Wehi, of Ngai Tūhoi, Te Whakatohea, Ngāpuhi, Te Whānauapanui e Ngāti Kahu, debuted in Christchurch at the Polynesian Festival in 86. It holds significance as its narratives are intricately linked to Te Tiriti o Waitangi and its adverse effects challenging the Honourable Korowetere and the Labour government of that period. Hatoheu! Katoheu! And all the men go, poof, poof, poof. You have to read the English. Katoheu! Kita mana na 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 hakatau reka reka tia reti reti o waitangi. Hore awa rupono i haina tia reti reti rupu matu reti tunga mai mo hio nei na tau go buki cha hai mo tu tonu na uye. No way na te kore no. serves as a political statement denouncing the distortion of the Tiriti o Waitangi. He vehemently rejects the belief that our ancestors endorsed the Tiriti, expressing regret for its unforeseen exploitation as a punitive tool against future generations. With sharp criticism, he questions the sincerity of Hobson's pledge, we are one people, labelling it as double-tongued deception. Te tiriti, in his eyes, has become synonymous with land confiscation, goods-grabbing transactions, and the eradication of indigeneity, casting human souls into obscurity. The poignant imagery of descendants continuing to lick the wounds of that deceitful tiriti underscores the lasting impact of historical betrayal. It's on this premise, I state, I have never ever seen Māori leaders, political figures, I'm getting into a koho now, (laughs) excluding Shane Jones, Tama Pōtaka and David Seymour, community advocates in Kaumatua within my community's educational institutions in Marae, had ever supported the notion that Māori willingly relinquished sovereignty to the Crown. Kore, kore, kore rawatunei. In defiance of historical disparities, I, where 39 Māori chiefs signed the Māori text of Te Tiriti o Waitangi, kei te mihi ki a Our rallying cry 
resounds unyieldingly. Faka mana tiatetiriti. Honor the treaty. This is not a mere echo of the past. It is a resolute demand for acknowledgement and adherence to the principles embedded in Tetiriti or Waitangi. The recent political discourse, this year's general elections, has left me deeply concerned as I observe Tetiriti, along with Kaupapa Māori issues like indigenous rights, Kaitiakitanga, Te Mana o Te Wai Three Waters, Te Reo Māori, co-governance, real partnership, a model of equality, equity at its best, tino rangatiratanga, etc., being trivialised and exploited by certain politicians. This dangerous trend seeks to oversimplify and amalgamate the diverse array of Māori political concerns into one singular narrative. We must not allow the richness of Māori perspectives, our perspectives, Pākehā Tauiwi Māori, to be diluted and overshadowed by political manoeuvring. Te Tiriti o Waitangi represents the sacred covenant and the principles of indigeneity and tiro rangatiratanga are not mere pawns for political expediency. It is our duty to preserve the integrity of these discussions, ensuring that the voices of our communities, our leaders, our kaumatua, our tamariki and our mokopuna are heard and respected. Just the other day, Thursday the 15th of November, Dame Anne Salmond criticised Act's proposal to amend the Treaty of Waitangi, stating... There. In conclusion, Kapahaka emerges not only as a cultural masterpiece, but as a formidable tool harmonising the cadence of Māori political concerns with the sacred echoes of atuatanga, Māori theology. Within the rhythmic movements and spirited performances, Kapahaka performs a dynamic conduit expressing and embodying the spiritual and political essence of the Māori people. As we honour the rich traditions of Kapahaka, we also celebrate its capacity to weave together the tapestry of Māori theology and political discourse, creating a powerful and resonant legacy for generations to come. I conclude by sharing Tāpirana Ngata's encouraging words to Rangi Bennett in 1949, I'm not going to sing it, I'm not Rawiri Waititi. <laughs> e tipu e rea mo ngā rao tō ao, ko tō ringa ki te rākau wa te pākeha, hei oranga mo tō tinana, ko tō ngākau ki ngā tāunga o tipuna, hei tiki tiki mo tō mahunga, ko tō wairua ki tō atua, nā nā nei ngā mea katoa. Thrive in the days destined to you, for you, your hand to the tools of the Pākehā to provide the physical sustenance, your heart to the treasures of your ancestors to adorn your head, and most importantly, your soul to God, to whom all things belong. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātai.